would take 40 hours to do on a, on a movie studio render farm uh, that includes reflections and all these other complex effects that go way beyond not just video games, but even what's used in a film render uh, for, for a movie. And this is actually not rendering on this machine, it's rendering on a faraway server, but as you can see when I move around, and I'm moving this just by pointing and clicking on the scene, it updates instantly. So we're going from 40 hours to, to real time. And we're going from millions of dollars of rendering servers to a service that can be streamed to a user for uh, 10 euros uh, a month or a few uh, euros an hour, depending on how much rendering power that you want. Uh, from a quality perspective and a simplicity perspective, there's, nothing, there's never been a drag and drop solution to compete with the likes of George Lucas or Steven Spielberg until now. I and mean, we can deliver that by having artists that work with these tools, uh, providing their own material libraries, their own techniques, and just through drag and drop, I can completely change the way a scene renders. And this is all running live, this is all running through a uh, stream. Uh, and, and it's actually so intuitive that many complex effects that are not used in films become completely accessible. You just saw depth of field. Uh, in fact, the entire camera system is very much like a real physical camera. So when I change the aperture setting, it's no different than uh, me with a real camera changing the aperture on, a, on my camera. And all you can see here, it, it, it does perfect blurring. It's physically correct. Uh, and this applies not just to the camera, but to physical materials and objects in the scene as well. Whether it's luminous uh, light bulbs or even the sun, uh, which I can just change the position of by pointing to a different place on the map. And as you were just seeing there, I, mean, I can turn the sun off, and all of a sudden the entire scene changes. I need to focus my camera a little bit here so you can see better. Um, but this kind of rendering with glass and with lighting and all these complex and reflections is, is something that, again, would take hours to render per frame. And here we're delivering it over the cloud in real time and streaming it into a, uh, into a window. Uh, there is one other element that we're looking at launching uh, before the end of this year, which takes this concept one step further. And uh, this is our own tool, our own UI that we've created so that artists can, uh, can get into this right away. But there are 60 million or so uh, users out there that know a 3D tool already, such as Autodesk Max or Maya. And in fact, Autodesk is, a, uh, is an investment partner of, of Otoy. Uh, and what I'm showing here is also rendering in the cloud. And this combines Octane Render, uh, which is our rendering service, with Autodesk 3D Studio Max. And what's interesting is that Autodesk 3D Studio Max is running in the same cloud as the rendering solution. And typically, if you look at these three gray squares, this is how an artist would, used to work within 3D Studio Max. They would see a rough approximation of their scene, and if they wanted to move the camera around, uh, they would have to wait a long time for that render to update. And as you can see here, while well, the rendering is instantaneous, no matter what you're doing inside of these scenes, you can actually see the update happening instantly with reflections and depth of field and everything happening completely in real time and completely in the cloud. And what's interesting is this is, in fact, an entire window system that we're streaming into this, uh, into this stream. So you have a virtual PC in the cloud. It's streaming at 60 frames a second. There's no latency. And the entire concept of having a computer uh, or how much computing power you have is completely turned on its head. And I'm going to show one more, uh, one more little demonstration of how far we can take this concept. Uh, and I'm just going to load this very same session up on an iPad. And this is now running also at 60 hertz, uh, interactively on my iPad. I have Windows, I have 3D Studio Max, and I have my, uh, my rendering power all available in the cloud. And there's absolutely no latency as well. This is wireless, so there's no wires, there's, no, uh, there's nothing that's, that's actually um, stopping this from running uh, with me on, on uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, and this is really exciting because now, you know, companies like Autodesk that have created tools like 3D Studio Max or these kinds of technologies that, that can aggregate $1,000, $2,000, $100,000 of rendering power can stream to a $299 device in real time with no, late, no lag, no latency. Uh, and that's pretty impressive. Uh, and the only other thing that we get questions about when we show this technology is, well, how far away can this work from the server? So we're, uh, you know, we're located in Los Angeles. And we have our server here in Los Angeles running a similar scene. And uh, this is uh, rendering from LA to Berlin. And the latency is basically about a quarter of a millisecond. Sorry, a quarter of a second, which is completely uh, usable for interactive scenes. And that's happening around the world. So anywhere you are in the world, we can deliver this experience. Uh, and we can deliver really computing power on demand. And that's something that I think is going to be incredibly disruptive and powerful for consumers and developers alike. I think that's quite amazing. <laughs> So let's get back to the, the original uh, situation I outlined.
I'm an amateur movie maker. I've shot some, uh, some video footage on, on a handy cam, uh, and now I can create CGI effects up in the cloud. How do I put it all together? Well, the tools that we're showing running in the cloud, such as Autodesk Massive Maya, can be complemented with video editing tools, such as Autodesk Combustion, uh, Toxic, and Composite, which allow you to blend video that you can upload to the cloud uh, with these kinds of 3D rendering tools that we're creating and adding uh, onto the system. So an end user can use those applications uh, and mix and match the 3D rendering that we're showing today with their own videos and deliver something that looks pretty amazing to YouTube. And I think that's going to empower a whole new generation of content creators. Uh, and you know, we're very excited to see that happen. Oh, I, am, I am too. And so, you know, the same final question to you. What are your technological barriers that are holding you back? You know, what kind of service do you want to be offering five years from now? I think five years from now, and this, this again is a $299 tablet device, uh, really we just need the screen and internet connection. So we can imagine a $29 device delivering the same experience with a million dollars worth of computing power on the cloud. And that, those two points are going to converge to the point where we think we can deliver um, really inexpensive cloud computing to really inexpensive devices and have that be supported worldwide. Very nice. Well, thank, thank you so much, Phil. Pleasure.